From the company that brought you Hell Yeah Truck Balls, the Cold Ones Cup Holder, and Bitchin' and Rollin' Fuzzy Dice, and the Splooge Away Seat Covers, we bring you the latest and greatest in windshield cleanliness products. It's Big Chunks. Big Chunks. When you've got brains on your windshield, get Big Chunks. Big Chunks. When you scored a three kill combo, you need Big Chunks. Big Chunks. <laughs> Big Chunks patented blood and gut repellent technology will keep your vision clear so you can keep death racing until the sun goes down and your pecker comes up. Ooh, it's up. So the next time you've got liver, pancreas, and lung on your screen, leave the rain axe at home and reach for the Big Chunks. Big Chunks. Welcome to Sticker Badness. It's good to have you. With me, as always, is Sam and Jackie. How are you guys? Good. Good? Sleepy. 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 Yeah. Sleepy. Sleepy's not going to cut it here in Stinker Studios number four. I can see your armpit hair. Mm. I'll <laughs> edit, edit that out later. <laughs> How about that? So we've been doing a bit of the boozing again. It's uh, Saturday. It's Memorial Weekend. Woohoo! You guys Yay. making any big plans this weekend? I'm uh, hanging out with you guys. Yeah, this. Mm. What happens after this? I go back to my real life. Which is? Bonbons and Mad Men, baby. Ah, yes. The Bonbons and Mad Men. I was thinking about doing a bunch of crack cocaine and playing in traffic. Oh. Well, I... I think that sounds kind of fun. Maybe I'll join you. Mm, you're not invited. This is a solo thing. Oh, well. Yeah. Guess I'll just have to fantasize about John Hamm once again. Mostly because I pull my pants down and play with myself incessantly. You should edit that out. <laughs> I'm on crack cocaine. I can do whatever I want. Cocaine. <laughs> so this week we've got a riveting. A big deal, in my opinion. It's the biggest deal we've done so far. And will probably be the uh, highest rated Rotten Tomatoes film that we ever do. Could be, could be. Currently could be. holds an 85 on Rotten Holy Tomatoes. Holy shit! That's out of control. Well, people love this fucking movie. Yeah. Well, it's not good, but people love it. Wow. Well, it, in case you didn't already know by the title of this podcast, it's Death Race 2000 starring David Carradine and Sylvester Stallone, as we promised you at the Over the Top podcast. We'd have more Stallone coming up. Well, here's the first of, of many. Of many. You yes. gotta get rhinestone on this shit at some point. Oh my God. Rhinestone Cowboy? No, just rhinestone. I thought it was rhinestone Cowboy. No, that's totally different. What's Rhinestone Cowboy? A song. Is so Rhinestone like Cowboy is not Rhinestone Cowboy. Yeah, that's not in yeah. Rhinestone. I don't know. Huh? All I remember about Rhinestone is that there's a sequence where he gets kicked out of the bar and it's just a black screen, and Sylvester Stallone is sitting outside. He's like, "It was really dark out here." And I thought that was the funniest shit when I was eight. <laughs> when I was eight, that was the funniest shit. That's the nice. only thing I remember about Rhinestone. Well, Jackie... And Dolly Parton's cans. Yeah, well, it's hard to forget. Uh, Jackie's the only one that, out of us that has not seen Death Race 2000. Yeah. I will put out a little disclaimer. I love this movie. Uh, it is the number one reason why I got involved in bad movies, budget movies, whatever you want to call at all. I Without... It's it's my Rosetta, round zero. Your Rosetta Stone. It's yeah. my Rosetta Stone. It's it's uh, yeah. It's 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 the show for I me. I think that this movie is about eighty percent of people that get into bad movies. This is the reason why. Yeah, it's which is why it has an eighty-five on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, and it's it's number five in my Hall of Fame, my Stinker Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's high praise. High praise. Yeah, it's on my. I think I was number. Th- I think it might be number five, too. I haven't put mine on the... I need to put that. It might move up after tomorrow. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens after we view it. Because it's been about, I want to say, ten years since I've seen it. Hmm. I bet 
It's been 12 since I've seen it. Yeah. It has been, uh, well, I've never seen it. Yeah. I just wanted to talk. It's the first one of any of our Hall of Fames. Actually, was uh, Invasion USA in your Hall of Fame? I don't believe it is, no. Yeah, so it's the first official Hall of Fame movie from any of us, so it's kind of a big deal. I'm pretty, pretty pumped about it. After this, though, the whole thing may go down in the can, and we just will, we're, we're, this is too early. It's too early. We're, like, we're peaking. We're peaking right I now. I don't know. I was thinking about throwing in Universal Soldier next week. Roland Emmerich. Man you damn. stole that from me. Uh-oh. That was going to be one of mine. You God damn it. Pick that. That's fine, because I got another one I'd rather do. I thought actually. yours was Girls Just Want to Have Fun. If you wanted to don't do, be giving away all my secrets. Ooh. Now, if you want to do Universal Soldier, that's fine, because I think I want to get in uh, Big Trouble in Little Tokyo, which, or, uh... Showdown in Little Tokyo, oh, which showdown. is in my in my Hall of Fame. I, oh yeah, we're not. Gonna, Just because you like Chinese food doesn't make you a. To- I can't even finish to- it. Tokyo's in Japan. Uh, yeah, obviously we sat out in the sun like all day. Oh, yeah, we were shooting. Yeah, all day. and uh, now we've been drinking for a good three hours. I would say out in the sun. So I had a hamburger, so I'm not all tanked up. Not all tanked up, but. Uh, I can see some shots coming here. Shots? Yeah. Shots, Whoa. shots, 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 shots. I, I gotta wake your ass up, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to throw down. I've been sick for two fucking weeks, yeah, so, yeah. like, my pants are coming off. Whoa, and that's exciting. I'm yes. gonna go play out in the street while I'll load it up on crack cocaine. Well, it's not gonna get dark till 10, so there may be some pitch and putt. We're being boring as shit right now. Yeah, let's get on with it. What do you got for Netflix do's and don'ts? Oh, he, ooh, he just got a stink, stink eye. Oh, man. Better showrunner than... Stink Eye! <laughs> I guess it's better than the showrunner Brown Eye that Whoa. tries to blow you kisses but accidentally hits you with feces. Oh, because, my God, I'm so sorry. That was a because, diarrhea kiss. Because two out of three hosts of Stinker Madness agree that there is air fecal particle matter in farts. Yep, That's true. It's I, true. I, I, still, I still stand behind that there's no poop in farts. Yep, it's a shit kiss. It's, it's right out of your brown eye. <laughs> That's so not... Like, we couldn't have become an actual civilized society if all we were doing if was we're smelling air- actual shit all the time. Like, all the time, it's just shit. Like, no That's Einstein, even- no Joan of Arc, no fucking... Why do you think farts smell? Because of methane! I'm pretty sure what? Your smell, I don't I've never smelled methane smell like eggs yeah and your farts smell like eggs my farts smell like eggs like easter eggs that have been lost for a couple of months yeah. like, uh. like if you were to actually <laughs> wrap easter egg or yeah wrap a three week old easter egg with uh, melted sun melted dog shit that's about what we're dealing with why, why do you think the uh, windows open in studio stinker studio of number four right now because <laughs> I'm dropping bombs baby all right Netflix do's and don'ts uh, this is why I, uh, we, we were bsing for so long is because we sucked this week we only watched two new movies I thought we watched uh, three mm, if you can come up with the third one I'll give you a high five you no, will, I don't think we did. We will win the official Stinker No Prize. What well, it was Aftershock. We got Aftershock with Eli Roth. No more written dirty by deeds. Eli Roth. Oh, that's right. We had two episodes. We only had time. Oh yeah. Like no. Well, it was the big uh, uh, season finale. Season finale of Shield. Of, uh, Agents of Shield. We did that. And Jackie slept until four o'clock again. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, you're getting thrown under the bus because you need to start waking up. Uh, Aftershock with Eli Roth, written by Eli Roth, produced by Eli Roth, not directed by Eli Roth. You know, I'm going against the grain here. I will say do if you like Eli. If you know what you're getting into, it's... No, no, I can't even say that, because his movies are more fun. This wasn't that much fun. This was zero fun. Zero fun at all. There was some really... And it started Tough out things hot. to watch. It kind started of started out. Kind of started hot. out. Well, it started out like an Eli Roth movie where it's just like bullshit for thirty. Well, minutes. he sets up characters that you want to die because they're dickheads. Right. That is true. That is. But true. then he didn't. The director didn't kill them fast enough, gory enough, or interestingly silly enough. enough. Yeah. It, it was like it, it was, was kind of a serious movie. It was kind of a serious movie with like a really not serious backdrop, like it was, partying in Chile with. Because that's how you pronounce it. Chile. Chile. Um, partying in Chile, and then all of a sudden an earthquake happens, and then there's some rapins. I I just, I wasn't comfortable with it. Like, 
I'm gonna say no. Yeah, don't do I, it. Don't do it. Don't. don't do it. It's it's a disappointment, and especially because it's the only Eli Roth movie on Netflix. So if you're like, oh, everybody talks about Eli Roth, I'm gonna go into this movie, and then you'll be totally out. Like you will not have anything to do with Eli Roth ever again. Did he direct Hostel Two, or did he just he produce did. it? Yeah. I did not care for Hostel Two. No, I didn't care for it either. But uh, Hostel we got One that, was okay. We got that Green Inferno coming up, so I'm I'm still excited about that. Uh, no more dirty deals starring and directing nobody ever. Oh, except for that one guy from that one movie that you said. The the black guy was the guy in uh, Midnight of the Dragon or Dragon Fist. Oh, Fist up your butt. shit, yeah. The, the main bad guy is also um, the last dragon. Oh, uh, the last dragon. There you go. Which I thought came out in like the 90s because there was that old theater that would show movies that weren't new and I wouldn't know that they weren't new sometimes because we were like 14 or something and Ben and I went and saw The Last Dragon and it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Show well, Enough is the bad guy. His well, name is Show Enough. This is not that. Uh, this oh, is no. one of those ones that's shot on tape, VHS probably and oddly it's edited. Like, there's blank parts in the audio where they're cussing. They dropped out the swear words. Yeah, it's just so weird. And, I mean, there's some fun parts in it because the acting is so terrible. When he, when they all um, go crazy makeup, like Mardi Gras masquerade uh, bur- burglary at the pool party. Yeah, that was That, that was, was pretty actually that was fucking pretty awesome, silly. but the rest of everything around that was yeah. not so awesome. Yeah, so we got two. I, I'm going to say don't. Jackie? Don't. I say yeah. don't. That's two don'ts. We did a we really did a bad job, job last week. But at least we're saving you time, oh listener, for um, watching shitty movies. But we're not, because we're advising you to watch shitty movies. So that's our Netflix do's and don'ts, guys. Yeah. Yay! Woo! Crack cocaine on the street. Okay. Pants are off. Those uh, pants are still on, listeners. I'm not actually wearing pants. They're, oh. sh- they're shorts. Short pants. Shorts. Shorts. Don't look at me like that, you two dickheads. I'm just letting you run with it. Yeah. Whatever. I didn't know where I was going. That's where it's going. I don't know. I was kind of getting the look like, oh my God, she's doing it again. I can't help but sing on this podcast. I just really can't. You really cannot. And that's and that's okay because you have a lovely voice. Thank you. I sang first this week. Did you? You did. Like a run song oh, track. Yeah, yeah. Which is a great I joined track. in. That's a so. great track. So we should actually just abort this podcast <laughs> just and go sing. sing karaoke and just rhinestone capital over uh, and over, yeah, and over again. Paul or just get some Paul Anka. <laughs> do some do some Paul Anka. We should go, Fuck it, man. We should go down to the, the karaoke bar and just pick the shittiest songs and fail at them and just do it and be like excited, like, yeah, it's my turn. Woohoo! And just sit there and be like, yeah. Yeah. Us, 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 <laughs> right us, before us. you start singing it horribly. Like, are you guys ready? Yeah. You guys ready to rock? Let's get pumped in here. Jolene, 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 Jolene. That's, that's the shitty version of an okay song, actually. Yeah, but you know, my sister's name is Jolene. So, I know. Uh, you know, that was just a little shout out to her. Huh. Hmm. Uh, she hates that song, by the way. Stinker News. Stinker, Stinker News. news. What are we at here? We're at uh, 13 minutes. Oh, boy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have some bad news. Bad news. Uh, mm. Silva, you totally blew ass. No, I didn't. So- <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was me. <laughs> I'm by the window. <laughs> I'm by the wife. <laughs> oh, it's Dr. Wife to you, buddy. Oh, god. Oh my god, yes. Um, uh, well, on, on the business of <laughs> shitty smells... <laughs> Uh, Fecal matter in my fart. <laughs> and and going back to the Sylvester Stallone, he uh, in recent news this week he came out and well not came out but he he uh, in an interview he said that he absolutely insists and guarantees that the Expendables three will be PG thirteen. Wow. Why? There wasn't anything in Expendables two that needed to be R. Uh all of the bodies. I guess the body count was high, but... Very high, lots of messy people, 
They're, I, the fun thing about the Expendables, and now that you can't do this, is I always wondered, like, who's the team that goes in after the Expendables and to just clean cleans it up. it up? Like, is there, like, say you invade someplace, like a castle, and, sure. and there's henchmen, like, maybe say 75 castle henchmen. Hefmen, he, hefmen. 75 henchmen. And you blow up half the castle, and you kill all the henchmen and the and the main bad guys. So you got seventy six sure. bodies. Sure. Do they just leave them? Like, say Bulgaria? Would the government of Bulgaria just oh, be like, you know what? It's you know, it's kind of remote. It's no, kind of remote. And um, what was it in Jimkata? What the hell was the name of that country? <laughs> uh, Truckistan or Parkmenistan? Parkmenistan or Parmistan? Parmistan. Parmistan yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. So yeah, what happens in Parmistan after gymnastics happens to half of the population? No, I mean like in real life. Like, is there a team? Does every country have a team of cleanup guys? Well, apparently you said that you yeah, go to they give them a Lewis, cart and everything, and there's dead bodies on the freeway there, that nobody's cleaning up. That's so true. That's true. There's probably not anybody cleaning it up. Probably not. So it's just vultures, it stays there. wild dogs, that's worms, hardcore, man. That's pigs. Hardcore. That stuff will get cleaned up by nature in weeks. Like what if what if henchman B's mom is like, where's my boy's body? Like can you can henchman B's mom go at, like pay somebody to go and get retrieve the body? Maybe that's like a super sweet sequel. You should get you should get Mark Wahlberg and uh, Will Ferrell to play the other or expendables. You do like a guy who that go in and clean up. He goes in and he finds evidence of deadness. Like instead of proof of life. Proof of death. <laughs> like brings back a finger. <laughs> like, Here's the tip of your son's uncircumcised penis. It was the only thing not eaten by vultures. <laughs> Apparently, mostly, they don't mostly like, not I, eaten by vultures. They don't like wieners. <laughs> I, I just I thought they would. I thought that so, was you know yeah. like dead wieners. That's because you're a man. You're like my wiener's got to be the tastiest thing on me. I that would, yum I, yum I, yum! Stick it in like, your mouth. Where a vulture would go first is like the gummy worm of dead bodies. <laughs> Five for a nickel. Uh, I got some rumors. Some rumors uh, of remakes. Mm. Okay. Potential remakes that are happening in the near future. Uh, Maniac Cop. Uh, I don't think I saw that the first time. And it was kind of it's kind of a crazy movie. It's it's pretty crazy. Uh, and then Kickboxer. Well, they've already rebooted Kickboxer. Uh, they did? Yeah. What's that called? Kickboxer. Yeah. Uh, what was it called before? Kickboxer. Uh, who was in both? Uh, Van Damme was in the, the first Kickboxer I'm aware of, but there was like... Uh, it's not Jeff Speakman. There was some sort of mediocre guy in the... And I, I, this is a TV And it's called effect. Kickboxer. Yeah, there's just another movie called Kickboxer that's basically the same exact thing. That I think doesn't sucks. even care to even call itself a reboot. It's just like, well, it's a movie about kickboxers, and this is a kickboxer, and we can call it that if we want. <laughs> it's, it's a repeat, is what it is. It's another... Yay. So well, the, apparently there's going to be another. Well, in theory, in yeah, because they did was such a great a job on Footloose. The Van Damme kickboxer. It's a, it's it's a Hollywood. Yeah, it's not a reboot. Well, I guess they're all reboots. Whatever. Well, I think that that's the thing is that a movie called Kickboxer. They're doing it over. It's but not. It is the Van Damme. Well, I'm assuming so. The, Why the, would they the, remake this other one that I've never even heard well, of? Well, I, I hope they have a sweet montage in it, or it's not going to be a, good. A handful of I, movies called Kickboxer. I hope they have a sweet montage, or it's not going to be very good. I'm pretty sure there's probably going to be a montage. Yeah, sweet montage. I don't know when, like, when you guys saw the Kickboxer the last time, but I watched it about a year ago. Yeah, you and watched that it is, in this house. No, I watched it at home. Hmm. I thought I brought over Bloodsport. Bloodsport's awesome. No. Anyway. Okay, sport. USA. Yeah. That's Bloodsport. Yeah, we did oh. Kickboxer too. And I was What's like, the one with the elephant dong? No, I, I wouldn't have been. Oh. No, I didn't think I would bring I think you guys might have watched it independently because Chelsea was on a big kick about it. Because I watched it like yeah, a year ago. I'm not a big ago, Kickboxer fan. And I was like, yeah, Kickboxer kind of sucks. I mean, I get it. I get it. Because, I know. It was. Well, no, because just, it's, the, it's yeah. the whole Van Damme uh, vibrating face. It was shit. Seriously, just like hey, he a picked that up from Kurt Russell. Sport. Kurt Russell. He does it too in Backdraft. Oh, oh yes, 
Kurt Russell from Backdraft, the movie that defines his career. Whoa. <laughs> What, what is, is it, is it good, good for? for? Absolutely nothing. What does that have to do with backdrop? That's what he's listening to when he pulls up in his boss stepside Chevy. He's just blasting it. Yeah. Or? Yeah, and he's got sleeveless shirt on. It's like huh. his dude moment in backdraft. He I rolls almost, up in a stepside Chevy in his sleeveless shirt, blasting war. I was almost thinking about going and getting backdraft along with Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I think it may suck too bad. I think um, it is just too stupid. Backdraft is goofy, but it's nowhere on the same. What it's, what the problem with Backdraft is is that it's Ron Howard, and there's elements uh, of good filmmaking mixed in with bad writing that just makes an unviewable. Here's film. the thing: is that once again, it's it's beloved by a group of people. Backdraft, the, the slow motion in Backdraft is. Fucking awesome. Okay. The rest of the movie is Yeah, but it's horrible. it's beloved by a specific group of people in America. That like war? No, they're they're dickheads, is who they are. Oh. They're they're the dickhead group. Um the guys that like nickelback and Do you think that America Fuck Yeah likes backdraft? I think America Fuck Yeah totally ask him, he's right out there. Hey, I, I, you I, like backdraft? I know he's not he's actually watching backdraft, right? He's not outside, he's watching backdraft in his garage right now. I wonder if our, our, our listeners are familiar enough with America Fuck Yeah, but it looks like it looks like our neighbor, whose name is America Fuck Yeah, has a buddy just leaning against the house. Yes! Oh, now they're ta- chasing There's children. Children. There's they're children. chasing children through the streets. I will have my pants off out there later. Put your children back inside. It's it's not a family friendly place. <laughs> the neighborhood? No, the street. The family neighborhood. The street. Well, you shouldn't play on the, in the street, anyways, because fuck. It's a goddamn street. What are you street. talking about? Game on, game off. Game on! They were adult men. Okay. Playing street hockey. Why are you in such a hurry? We're at minute 22. You ready for improv? And then what happens after improv? Well, no, I'm excited about my picks this week. Mm. Stinger Digger! Yes! I am excited about my Stinger Digger picks. Sam, give us the intro. Stinger Digger! I forgot the tablet again. God damn it. All right, you guys are going to have to make sounds. You should just go get it and I'll fill. Okay, fill. So, Jackie. It's Julie's fault. Yeah, Julie is a fucking whore. <laughs> Julie, our new audio uh, our, our new audio girl, Julie. She told me last night. This that is such a shit idea. I, <laughs> I can't even get behind this. You got to let me tell the joke. Oh, fine. It's the worst joke. Now it's not even going to be any good. You ruined it. They want to have a fake audio lady named Julie so oh. that they can... Shit. So that they can totally blame all their up. crap on Julie. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's pretty fucking stupid. And they were like, no, but then we could call her a whore and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that that's not you, no, awesome. No, you're, you're right. Yeah. It is, uh, it it's is, fucking dumb. It's fairly sophomoric. Then you blew it, Jackie. Well, there's no more Julie. Jackie just spilled the She's beans. dead. Yep. yep. Julie is dead. You guys so suck. now Julie has been fired and replaced by Ted. Who Jackie will be totally okay with calling a giant shit stain on the face of the earth. Ted coincidentally also also uh, drinks too much vodka, blacks out, and wakes up with the white diarrhea. <laughs> oh my god. You guys are just so... Okay. Are okay. you ready? What? Ready for our stinger thinkers. Uh, the first one. The tagline. A new breed of hero. Fuck. A sarcastic humanoid duck. Slot machine, that's me, Howard the Duck. I had laser yep. room at the same time. I thought we were she was supposed to choose no. the one that was the better. Slot machine was totally first. Yep. Alright. Number two. The tagline is Have you given blood lately? A half vampire, half mortal man becomes a protector of the mortal race while slaying evil vampires in a world where vampires walk the earth. Blank has a goal. His goal is to rid the world of all vampire evil. Did I you think that was me. I'm horror. You're game buzzer. I was. I think I got the game buzzer. Yeah, I think I heard game buzzer first. Blade too. the vampire. Yep, Blade. Blade. No, I, just I don't know why we waited was, so long. I know, I know. I was waiting for it to be near dark. Yeah, I was waiting I was really for something waiting else. For it I wasn't prepared dark, for it to be Blade. It was, all right. It was obviously Blade, but the whole time I was like, it can't be Blade. And the final one, no more taxes, ever. 
after discovering that an asteroid the size of Texas is going to... Yes. Armageddon? Yes! Damn it! Shit, he is running away with this. That is now six to four, Sam. Owie. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Stinger Thinkers, brought to you by Crazy Quest. Crazy Quest, the nutritious treat that gives you the runnies. It's got too much fiber. It gives you the trots. <laughs> unless, you, unless you're plugged up and you want the trots, because that happened to me one time. I like, I, I like, you know. Now we're never going to get sponsored because I'm, I'm just, I'm just throwing this out there. But I like the guys that do get sponsored. And there's this new granola thing that they sponsor. I won't name the company, but the big, the big podcasters get sponsored by this company. And every time they're like, "Oh yeah, eat the granola. It's really good." <laughs> I had some yummy. It's in my tooth still. It's been <laughs> yeah, three days. Gross. Nobody likes the granola. Like it's ma- male, male, like not male as in penis, but uh, like chain mail. Like no, no, not or like, like chain mail, but like no, like you order it and it gets mailed. You open up your mailbox and then there's granola. granola. In it. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, fucking mmm, tasty. So uh, I think we are ready for the improv. No, we are not. Oh, Sam's uh, trivial. Yeah, fact, fact, delicious bitch. Yeah. Uh, Death Race 2000 was directed by Paul Bartel, who is most notably for doing cameos in movies that were either produced by uh, Roger Corman or the directors started with Roger Corman. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also wrote and directed a film called Eating Raoul, which is uh, very popular in in some circles. That's what he's most notable for. Uh, I don't know that at all. Uh, written by Robert Tom and Charles B. Griffith. Robert Tom died young in 1979. Charles B. Griffith uh, is most known for writing Little Shop of Horrors. Yay. Oh, yes. That's a good He one. also directed Eat My Dust with Ron Howard, which we saw. We did just see and that, which I might think be on that Netflix. Is a Netflix do. I think that is a Netflix do. It's, no, that, it's not great, it. but it's fun. It's fun. It's fun enough. I'm shooting puppies. You know what car that was? We were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was a Plymouth Three, satellite. Say more. It was the car in that movie. Oh, uh, with uh, Eat My Dust. Eat My Dust, Plymouth. yeah. We, thought, well, we kept saying it was different things. We were wrong every goddamn time. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> also, he has been described as legendary because he's written a cavalcade of uh, B-movies, that, that being uh, Charles B. Griffith. The short story was based on uh, I.B. Melkor. Oh, yes. Apparently, they don't keep very much of the original short story for this movie. I bet not. Uh, most cars were rebodied Volkswagen bugs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, all of the cars were later sold at a considerable profit, sometimes three times more than it cost to make them. Mm. Like, right after they got done making the movie, Corman just, like, had a car auction Paid off. The movie cost like three hundred. Well, they couldn't 000. cost that much. Well, the movie, the whole movie, cost three hundred thousand. Right. So the car could have made it back on selling I mean, the cars. Uh, Frankenstein drives a Corvette, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, and they, oh no! What's her? What's her face? The cow. Thought, cow lady drives a Mustang. Yeah. The uh, what's her name? Um, Calamity Jane. I I can't remember what her name is, but she. Yeah, it's Calamity cow, Jane. Cow car. Anyway, uh, Stallone and Carradine do much of their own driving. Nice. Nice, good for them. Now, Calamity Jane, Mary Waranoff, didn't know how to drive, so she does none of her own driving. Good for her. Good they for her. They built one of the early... Stick with your strengths. One of the early uh, car rigs was built for this movie. They just put it, like, basically put her car, took the wheels off, and put her on a trailer and drove it around. behind a uh, crew because she didn't know how to drive at all. <laughs> Which is hard. I, th- that's just a thing to me that's like... It's hard Corman, to not drive. Well, no, it's hard to get cast in a Corman movie if one of, for, and you're not able to do one of your only yeah, tasks. you're just there because of your talent? Hmm. Hmm. That is interesting. Maybe... Actually, you know why she was there? Cans? Tits. Yeah. Okay. Ah... Yeah. Uh, Frankenstein, uh, David Carradine's character, was originally offered to Peter Fonda. I can see that. Who didn't do it because he described the screenplay as too ridiculous for words. Oh. <laughs> and then goes through like a lull in his career. Oh, yeah, big time. Like, what was that? Uh, Uli, what was that? St. Uli's Gold? Uli's Gold? I never saw in, that. In like the 90s or whatever. But he was like nothing. For yeah, well, Highball oh. was right at the, about the same yeah, point I mean, in time. Was, 
And after that, there's... Nothing. Yeah. Uli's Gold, I think, is what it's called. And that was, like, in 96 or something like that, but... He's just such an ugly man. Uh, but David Carradine's not exactly one you want to, like, put a poster up of in your wall if you're 13, your old girl. He's pretty fugly, too. Yeah, uh, either way. I don't know who these people are. Dave, you know you know Peter Fonda. I know who Peter Fonda is, but I haven't David seen Carradine. this movie. You know I don't David remember who Carradine, Carradine is. a big deal. Would you quit remember getting Remember when we watched Lone Wolf McQuaid? He's, He's Bill. the bad guy in He's Lone Wolf McQuaid. He's fucking Bill. In Kill Bill 2, yeah. And 1. I haven't seen the Kill Bill the movies. Time. Oh, my God. He's fucking Kane in Kung Fu. We watched Lone Wolf McQuaid. Remember with Chuck Norris? Where yeah. Yeah. The bad guy, oh, the other okay. kung fu guy. That's David. That's you farted David again. <laughs> I was getting bored. Oh, so this is taking too long. I'm oh. trying to get you guys out of here. Jesus. Anyway, maybe that... we should do a Wednesday episode while Jackie's busy. <laughs> She's busy on Wednesday. You're getting voted off the island. <laughs> you stink. Uh, yeah, I guess there's not like I, guess, I I was filling here. There was a lot of I, I made this bullshit. Oh, we're good. We're over thirty minutes now. A so, lot longer yeah, than yeah. it needed to because really the most notable thing of this film is it's so popular that it's constantly referenced in other movies mm-hmm. and books and mm-hmm. everything. And I think most notably uh, the Carmageddon video game, which was awesome. And then of course it's been rebooted, which there's now four movies. In the oh, they're series. so stupid. They're real bad. They're and they're not even the same thing. Not the same idea. The, like track inside of a building. Yeah, they're Those Nickelback so movies. Dumb. Yeah, they're Nickelback movies. Totally failed to understand the concept of uh, Death Race. So, uh, improv. Uh, let's reenact the what we think, which I already know what the movie is about. But Sam has some vague. He's a little gray. He's got a brain cloud about the uh, Death Race. I remember the key points. And uh, Jackie has never seen it. So Jackie will be playing the role of... Frankenstein's Navigator. Or she could do Calamity Jane. And she like, could do Calamity Jane. Which fucking is, drive. <laughs> this is all she could do, basically. And then it's cast for somebody who's like supposed to be the dark horse of the race, and the character playing it can't fucking drive. So I, <laughs> I'm sticking you know. with Jackie being the Navigator. I am going to be Frankenstein, and Sam will be playing the role of Sylvester Stallone. He will be reprising his, <laughs> his role, role as Sylvester, as Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. So I will not be doing this as a Christopher Walken version of George Jetson either. <laughs> uh, I want you to start, Jackie. You're you're the Navigator. I want I want you to start. Yeah, you have to lay this off. We actually know where this movie's going. Yeah, you're the plot you have of to, this movie. You have to steer this uh, this race is three. pretty oh. illegal. What are we going to do? We're going to send you over cover, ma'am. Oh, well, okay. I'll go undercover as Frankenstein's navigator. Hey, everybody. I'm Frankenstein's navigator. Slutty McSlutterson. Mm, mm, tits. <laughs> I don't need a navigator. No more cum. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> I said I don't need a navigator. <laughs> yes, you do. Who's going to save you at the end of the night when the sun goes down and the penises go up? <laughs> I heard there's a lot of sex in this movie. <laughs> that guy will take me. <laughs> the only thing I find sexy in this movie is Sylvester Stallone's naked ass. <laughs> Look at all that hair. You just run my hands through that guy's butt <laughs> hair forever. <laughs> Let's drive! I use Sylvester Sloan's butt sweat as oil in my sweet Corvette because it's super greasy. Uh. <laughs> Yay! You're not down with the butt grease there, Stallone? Uh. Go to the left! Go to the left! Uh. What's on the left? <laughs> Butthole lane. <laughs> So it's like that scene in Days of Thunder with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman and they're both really shitty actors and that movie sucks so bad. I went off to the right of the movie script. It's time for my singing solo. If only somebody would love Frankenstein or a man trapped in a mask. Love me. Nobody's going to love you, honey. Just get behind that wheel and drive. Uh. Well, I guess my job as navigator's over. I'm dead. Uh, I actually died way before he did. <laughs> and that's what we think's going to happen. 
So we should get back to Days of Thunder. No, Nicole that movie Kidman. Sucks. Wait, Nicole Kidman was in Days of Thunder. Yeah, dude. I thought yeah. she was in Far and Away, and that she was, was in she Far was in Far Away, away as well. It was the Ugh. you don't fucking remember. Oh, like here's some more Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman down your fucking gullet. Oh, all I remember the most like oh, oh the stupid thing about that shit was it was like oh here's obviously a fake marriage that we're gonna cram down your throat and then. He fucking tops it like five years later with the, like the epic fake marriage. Like he's due for another fake marriage. I thought he was like engaged into a fake marriage. To who? Some Hollywood tart. Um, <laughs> the next beard. <laughs> I, nice. You know what happens? Actually, this should happen right now. We can get notoriety here, because apparently if you accuse Tom Cruise as being gay in any level of the media, he will sue you for about $40 million and win. Okay. Tom Cruise is gay. Gay as shit. Gay as shit. I don't actually think he's gay as shit. I'm just saying he's gay as shit. For the sake of saying he's gay as shit. shit. I think he's just fucking crazy as shit. Well, there's apparently a gay porn star that got... He, like, sued the guy out of... Off of the side of the earth. Is his Uh, name Tom Cruise's? So this guy had been notable for making these, like, fetish gay porns where they involve wrestling and then the loser has to take it. Mm. And uh, that was... I've the, seen that before. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, I yes. am familiar mm. with these. Mm. Uh, I think they call it lunchy munchy. What? I don't think they call it that. I don't know what they I think I call it lunchy oh, munchy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do you lose on purpose, honey? You don't have to lie. No, I watch it during my lunch hour. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, it's not arousing. It's just entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it makes for a great sandwich. It's, it's better than WCW. Butt sandwich. <laughs> but uh, apparently the guy accused Tom Cruise of, for months, coming to a hotel and uh, staging these wrestling matches with him that were basically the the same thing like mm-hmm. loser mm-hmm. takes it and mm-hmm. the Tom Cruise wasn't a very good wrestler <laughs> <laughs> and the guy came out and said that and then like the next day like the dream legal team was suing the guy for a hundred million dollars and like he was so back ass words that he ended up getting a judgment against him for ten million dollars when he had like 86 bucks to his name or something like that. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) That's going to work out. Well, on that note, I think it's time to get to the chopper. What are you guys saying? Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper!